He was preaching from the text, ye will not come unto me that ye might have life. And as Richard Cameron warned to his subject, he warned those who were present that they could not hide themselves from God, for God knew all their motives and desires for attending that particular service. And then he came to a point in the sermon which appears to be the crucial point, and he turned to them and he said, Will ye not come in a believing way to him? In a word, will ye not believe the doctrine? And as he applied that word powerfully to that congregation that day, he was so overwhelmed with the words that he was preaching that he had to stop. And as he engaged in prayer with the congregation, a great silence fell over the congregation. And as he resumed his preaching, the people were broken, and there was great weeping among the people as they cried to God for mercy. One writer of the Times tells us that that sermon was so signally owned and blessed of God that Scotland had rarely seen such an occasion as this. Hundreds that day did come to know Jesus Christ. We are now going to sing from the 121st Psalm. This psalm was a great source of comfort and strength to the covenanting people. We're singing it to the tune French, which has been long associated with this psalm. I to the hills will lift mine eyes. I to the hills softly ye breezes by mountain and moor, o'er the graves of the covenant men, by the moorland and flood that were red with their blood, can you waft the old watchwords again? And wherever they blew, a prayer was breathed, and a holy psalm was sung, and hands were clasped, and the banner grasped, when the covenant watch were rung. The church in Fenwick was built in 1643 and contains several relics associated with the Covenanters. We have been using a modern banner for our conventicle services, but here is a banner that is over 300 years old and was used at conventicles in this area. The people of this church show great interest in the covenanting period and maintain the stones of the covenanters who are buried in the churchyard in a very good condition. Among these stones is that of Captain John Payton, whose Bible is here in the church, and whose sword we have here. To many people, the idea of a Christian taking up arms appears as the very antithesis of the personal faith we have been speaking about. 
That is an easy stance for us to adopt, particularly as we live in the luxury of the ease and indifferentism of today's life. But it is a different matter when we are faced with an enemy who is prepared to take everything that is dear and precious from us, even life itself. Here at Drumclog, we are reminded of an uprising. The Covenanters were taking part in an open-air conventicle near Loudon Hill. Thomas Douglas, one of the Covenanting ministers, was conducting the service. Word was passed that Claver House, their arch enemy, was approaching the scene from Straven. He had received word that the Covenanters were planning a conventicle. His orders were, no quarter to be given. Lookouts would have seen the approaching forces from the top of the hill. Thomas Douglas hurriedly brought the worship to a close with these words. You have had the theory, now for the practice. Self-defense is always justified. The Covenanters sang a psalm and waited for the well-armed troops to attack. They were ill prepared for a battle except for their knowledge of the boggy ground, which proved treacherous for Claver House's horses. The government forces were routed. Toleration is a good thing in its place, but you cannot tolerate that which will not tolerate you and is seeking to cut your throat. The second half of the 17th century in Scotland was in reality a battle between liberty and despotism. typical site for a conventicle service. The high ground provided protection for the worshippers and an ample vantage point for the sentries. The Covenanters continued as they worshipped here to praise God with confidence and with trust. And we are going to sing a song, a psalm of praise that celebrates God's victory. Psalm 98, sing a new song to Jehovah. Sing a new song to Jehovah. this is an appropriate time to ask the question, what was the secret of the Covenanter's faith? That faith which enabled them to stand fast for the principles, for freedom to worship and to preach the gospel. The Covenanters were very ordinary people, yet they had this important distinction. They were men and women who knew Jesus Christ to be a reality in their lives. Personal religion begins with an experience whereby the soul that is 